chair now recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kinsinger, for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We deal with a lot of very important issues in this body. In fact, everybody that's going to speak this morning is going to speak about some very important issues. But I would argue that there is no issue more important that we deal with in this body than the issue of American global leadership and the issue of national defense. I just got back from a security summit in Munich, and I want to share some of my thoughts in talking to our allies and talking to strategic partners around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a decline of American leadership around the globe. There is a perception that America is on the retreat from the rest of the world, America that's tired of a decade of war, which I fully understand. An America that decides the, ri the, the fight is just not worth it anymore. And the decline of American leadership around the world is not something that we can't do because it's not good, but it's dangerous, not just to us, but to the rest of the globe. Let's think about how we got in this position in the first place. It was the failure of American leadership through the 90s to pursue a terrorist jihadist by the name of Osama bin Laden. Instead, this nation and the president treated him as a common criminal and not as a declared opponent and a war opponent of the United States of America. What we saw was an attack on the World Trade Centers, attack on the USS Cole, attack on uh, the Kobar Towers in Saudi Arabia, and then finally it culminated in an attack that took 3,000 American lives and woke America up to the reality of global jihadism and terrorism and the fact that we have people that live solely for the purpose of killing and destroying people that don't see eye to eye with their specific religious ideology. Failure to confront those terrorists in the 1990s led to that big problem we have today. And what we've seen lately is the same kind of retrenchment by the United States of America, the most power, undoubtedly still the most powerful country in the world. Our enemies no longer fear us and our allies no longer trust us. Let me label a few of these areas that have concerned me. In Iraq, I'm a veteran of Iraq. The U.S. Marines actually fought to take the city of Fallujah and took the most casualties that they've taken probably since Quezon and Vietnam. Today, the black flag of Al-Qaeda flies over Fallujah. The sacrifice of thousands of Americans is now being confronted by the black flag of Al-Qaeda because this president, eager to achieve a campaign promise, pulled all the troops out at the end of 2011 and didn't leave a residual force. As unpopular as it may be, if we left a counterterrorism force in Iraq, we'd be facing this problem today. I look at a terrible deal that was just struck with Iran, a deal that basically says Iran is allowed to be a threshold nuclear state. Sure, the secretary, the president, will say that we're going from 20% enrichment to 5 Doesn't mention that bringing 5% enrichment to weapons-grade enrichment actually doesn't take that long. And oh, by the way, now all the surrounding states to Iran think that they, and probably feel it totally entitled to saying that they have a right to enrich uranium up to 5%. In essence, creating a whole host of Middle East threshold nuclear states. And yet we call this a victory? I look at Syria, 11,000 opponents to Assad, tortured and murdered and labeled with numbers, 11,000 people, which made, which made Srebrenica, the thing that launched America to intervene in Bosnia, make Srebrenica look small. 11,000 opponents to Assad, tortured and killed. And you look at Assad, who's purposely targeting the Free Syrian Army and not Al-Qaeda opposition, so that Al-Qaeda opposition grows to him and he can stand in front of the West and say, I am the protector. If we get to a point where we look at Assad, a brutal dictator in Syria, as the protector of freedom, God help us. I look at instability in Lebanon. I look at one of our greatest allies, Jordan, hosting hundreds of thousands of refugees. I look at Israel surrounded by instability in the Middle East. I look at a resurgent China that challenges America all over the globe now. And I look at a Russia that continues to occupy a third of its neighbor to the south, Georgia. I look at Ukraine, people standing up for freedom. I haven't heard much from this administration. I am burdened by this lack of American global leadership. I don't care about the politics of it. I don't care about November with this. 
I care about the of this country. And what I see is the decline of American leadership, still the greatest country around the globe. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.